Hey guys, so in this video, I'm gonna be doing something a little bit different. I'm actually gonna be assembling this Sane Smart CNC router that a friend's brother picked up and asked me if I'd be willing to assemble it for him. And I said, sure, because I'm totally not, you know, content starved or anything like that. I'm joking. I've actually wanted to put one of these together just to get an idea of how good or bad they were. So, tiny bit of a preface. Obviously, I am mechanically inclined. I change my oil and transmission fluid on my Honda. Uh, I can change a flat tire, I've run a CNC machine. So I have, I have some mechanical background. So take anything that I say about assembling or how this operates with a grain of salt in that department, but really it's more about how practical is something like this for somebody who's trying to get into CNC machining or routing or things like that. So without further ado, let's just dive into this. I'm just gonna keep the camera rolling and if there's any good stuff, I'll chop it out of the video. And if you wanna watch the full uncut, well, I guess you can do that too. So. Let me get started. So pretty simply we have, you know, the all the, oh, pick this tool up. Oh, okay, nobody cares about that. Definitely going to need the user manual though. That is useful. Some uh, packing foam, I'm saving that. Now let me put the box down, pull things out. That's awkward. Okay, so this is super floppy, but we have the spindle, steppers, electronics, crap like that. We have the extruded aluminum, which is the router table, decently sized, I must say. And in the bottom here, we have, it's kind of hard to see, we have a bunch of just random aluminum parts. We also have these interesting um, injection molded plastic parts. I, I will say, wouldn't exactly think injection molded plastic is the strongest and there's probably aluminum parts that you can get as a replacement, but you know what? We're just gonna use it as is.
Okay, so according to the laptop, three hours and 45 minutes later, also known as I just let it run overnight because it was late and, you know, no need to babysit the thing. Something has happened. I have no clue what is underneath there. So let's blow this off with a little bit of duster and see what's in there, shall we? Well, there's definitely something. I will say probably plywood isn't the highest fidelity material to be doing work like this in, but it, it did produce something. So I will definitely give it that. I will also say these bits are the absolute worst choice for doing any kind of 3D contouring as well. They're decent for light duty engraving and that's it. So yeah, no, I definitely have to say though that um, in terms of did it produce something? Yes, it did. So what are my thoughts on these little things overall? Well, I hate to sound really snarky, but they're like any other really cheaply built import item. They could have potential to be pretty cool, but the problem is they always cheap out on the components. And that's honestly what I find super frustrating. Now, where I really feel like they dropped the ball is there is no homing mechanism for this like what a 3D printer has. According to the control board on here, it has the capability for home switches to be installed. And it honestly wouldn't be that much more expensive to install them, which would be nice. So then your machine moves to a known XYZ zero location so you can repeatedly do the work instead of just having to eyeball things and hope you got it in the right spot which is kind of frustrating. Also the use of the plastic parts on here, plastic inherently is just going to flex. So realistically, I could see you doing some light duty engraving with this and soft materials, but anything beyond that, I don't see happening. But that's also because I come from a machining background. That said, if you wanted to carve a bunch of balsa foam or something like that, I could actually see this getting the job done. So it definitely is a machine that you would have to learn to work with and use correctly. So I'm definitely not saying that you can't do anything with it. Just, you know, bear that in mind. Now, as for this, I am honestly tempted just to run the tool over it again, just to see if it does anything better as a finish pass. But, you know, we'll see. So hope you guys found this useful. And well, I'll see you here next time on Make It With Calvin.